Welcome to this talk about my ancestor Francis Sumner, my great 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 grandfather, who was a pioneering early breeder of Dandy Dinmont Terrier dogs. I hope in this talk to give you an introduction to his life and also some of his history with the breed, which I think is is nice to know about, especially for current owners and enthusiasts for Dandy Dinmonts. The picture in this first slide is a painting of Francis Sumner. That was him as a young man and it would have been painted at about the time that he was actively breeding Dandy Dinmont dogs in Berwickshire. I'd like to tell you a little bit about his origins. Uh, Francis Sumner was born in Yester Parish in East Lothian in 1803. He was a farmer's son. He had East Lothian farming ancestors on his paternal side going back quite a few generations. On his mother's side he had ancestors including borderers. One of his great-grandfathers was James Beach who was Laird of Glen in Peeblesshire and Bowhill in Selkirkshire and he actually sold Bowhill to the Duke of Buccleuch in the 1740s. Now Francis was born in 1803 and he was a farmer's son and in Charles Cook's 1885 History of the Breed he recounts his first encounter with Dandy Dinmont dogs which is quite a long quote but I'd like to read it out to you because I think it's really nice. It gives a flavour of how he, he first met the breed and what he thought of it. So he wrote, he wrote, Mr. Thomas Stevenson Jedburgh had come over with a few hands to help my father, who farmed largely near Harrington with the harvest. I was going into the harvest field one day when suddenly something rushed at my legs and seized me by the trousers. I looked down and saw a curious looking little dog, more like an otter than anything else, being long in the back with very short legs. I had never seen anything like it before and I called out to Mr. Stevenson to come and see the creature. When he came he said, oh that's a Dandy Dinmont's terrier. She came over with one of James Davidson's men from Hindley. It is one of the breed referred to in Guy Mannering. I looked again at the little creature and then noticed that it had been sitting on a coat, her master's, at the edge of the field and I was so taken with its appearance that I said to Mr. Stevenson that I would like to get it. He told me the breed had lately come into great request and that I would have to pay a long price for her. I then saw the owner and bought Nettle. This occurred somewhere about 1820, I think, but might be a few years earlier. So that was Francis Sumner recalling his first encounter with the breed. And he would have been um, 17 or younger at the time. And he was besotted. Now, later in the 1820s, he set himself up as a farmer near Erlston, so northeast of Melrose, and he farmed at West Morriston Farm. And he stayed there from sometime in the 1820s through to circa 1842. And this was the main era of the, the breeding kennel that he had. Um, he married as a young man in 1827 to Jesse Usher, and they had a 11 children, eight, 8 sons and 3 daughters. Now I, I was tracing my family history and of course you, you look at conventional family history records and there's parish registers for the, the baptisms of the children and there's census returns for the house. But nowhere would you know that he had lots and lots of dogs that he was breeding as well as his um, farm business. He supplied dogs at this time to customers including the King of France. And he had a very active kennel for most of two decades. Circa 1842, he moved to Kelso to become a seedsman and commission agent, and he gave up the farming. And most of his dogs were um, transferred to E. Bradshaw Smith, who obviously became a very famous breeder later, as well as others. And this is Podgy 2. I can't quite remember if Podgy 2 was a a daughter or a granddaughter of one of Francis Sumner's dogs but I quite like this picture because it, it's showing the, the dog with a sort of agricultural scene in the background and that would have probably been a very familiar scene at West Morriston Farm. I'd like to say a little bit about 
Francis's role in the early history of the breed. Um, obviously he, he bred a lot of dogs. It's, it, it's impossible to put a number on it because there aren't complete records for all of them but a lot of his dogs have descendants today and a lot of the things that he was looking for in dogs he encouraged in the breeding and they would have led to traits in dogs afterwards. He, he was particularly keen on encouraging gameness in the breed. He had a, an intricate system set up where he would test puppies and dogs before breeding from them to make sure that they, they, were, they were suitable for hunting out vermin going underground. He also had strong views on the appropriate appearance of dandy dimmit dogs. I mean, he was in favour of the top knot, for instance. And all of these things would have influenced the types of dogs that he was breeding. Now, his most famous dog was Shem. This is, this is a picture of Shem. Shem was born in 1839, um, so when the family was still at, at West Morriston at Erlston. And Shem has many, many descendants living today among the dogs. Francis was also a founding member of the Dandy Dinmont Terrier Club in 1875 when it was founded in Selkirk. I mean, at the time he was living in Kelso, it wouldn't be too far for him to go and it, it would have been a lot for him to be there. And many of his records are now in the Dandy Dinmont Terrier Club archive in, Kel in Carlisle. So um, pedigrees of the dogs and some of his notes are there, which is quite nice to have. As a genealogist, I, I, I marvel that he kept genealogies of the dogs. Um, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm like tracing my family tree back to him and forward and sideways and I'm thinking, and he had, he had notes about dogs in their family trees, which is quite nice. Now, the next slide shows um, one of these pedigrees, actually. It's a pedigree of Shem and the notes are from Mr. F. Sumner at West Morriston, who had the dog. Um, and Shem was sold to E. Bradshaw Smith of Blackwood House, Ecclefechan. And I was really pleased, um, not that long ago, when I was going through the old newspapers looking for references to the Sumners, I found a really nice reference to Francis's Sumner's role in recording the history of the breed. So in 1875, when a stud book for the Dandy Dinmont was being planned, and I presume it was Charles Cook who was involved at this point. Um, Francis Sumner had a visitor at Kelso, so as the local paper, the Kelso Chronicle, reported the Dandy Dinmont stud book, some weeks ago it was mentioned in our columns that a Dandy Dinmont club had been started, right enough, and that efforts were immediately to be made to get up a stud book. In pursuance of this project, a gentleman was in town on Wednesday with the view of obtaining information. So that's in Kelso. He waited in the course of the day upon Mr Sumner, whose knowledge of the favourite breed is well known to be both extensive and accurate, and from him procured many interesting particulars, including pedigrees, etc. Mr Sumner at one time possessed a breed of dandy dinments which stood almost unsurpassed, and has now, though continuing to take much interest in the breed, relinquished breeding. So I have this vision of... Perhaps it was Charles Cook coming to Kelso for the day, perhaps on the train, and going to see Francis Sumner and discussing this with him and making notes. And, and, and news of this made it into the newspaper. It was well worth reporting in the local press. So I quite like that. And of course, the notes on the right are from the pedigree of Shem going back in time. And these were from Francis Sumner's own notes. Coming towards the end of Francis's life, he continued working as a seedsman until his 60s. I, I've got this information from the census in the 1861 census and the 1871 census. He's still working as a seedsman, but ultimately he retired and he passed the business on to his youngest son, Edward, who carried on in Kelso. Francis survived his wife Jessie. They both lived to a great age, but he lived he lived longer and remained in Kelso and he died in 1891 aged 87 years, which is a marvellous age to have reached for 1891 really. 
He's buried with Jesse and some of their family in Kelso Rosebank Cemetery. And it's a very nice riverside location. Now, I wanted to close with um, this little snippet that I found years ago, before I realised that he was a Dandy Dinmont breeder. And again, I mentioned that, you know, I look at census returns and parish registers and they mention the people, but they don't mention the dogs. And the only mention in a conventional genealogical record of the dogs, or at least the breed, is in a will. And this was the will that Francis and Jesse drew up before they died. And they ask for the picture or painting belonging to us of a Dandy Dinmont Terrier and various other pictures to be given to their daughter, Jean Veach Sumner or Ferguson. So. It was a cherished piece and they knew who they wanted to have it and they mentioned that in the will and uh, having learned more about Francis's time with the dogs and his interest in the breed and his obvious appreciation for the breed it, it sort of m means quite a lot to me that although this might be the only reference I have in conventional genealogical records it's a very personal one and it was obviously a very personal bequest. So I think that's me wrapped up. I hope that's given you a taste of Francis Sumner's life and his story and some of his dogs. And I hope it might enrich the Dandy Dinmont Terrier history somewhat. Thank you.